Hi, welcome to Solution Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to look at solubility curves at saturation in 100 grams of water. Specifically, we're going to looking at how you use reference table G to figure this out. Table G and saturated solutions, we'll talk about unsaturated and supersaturated solutions in future videos. Given solute mass, finding the temperature. And finally, given temperature, finding solute mass. Understanding table G and solubility curves. A curved line for each compound shows the maximum number of grams of solute that can dissolve in 100 grams of water at a given temperature. So that is sort of an overview of table G. Key things to note. On the bottom, we have temperature in degrees Celsius. This temperature ranges from zero to 100. On the Y, we have solubility of your solute. That is the thing that you are dissolving in your solution, which in this case will be water. How do we know it's water? Because this says grams of solute per 100 grams of water. And that 100 grams of water is really important to notice. Solutions with a gram amount of solute and a temperature that intersect on the curve are called saturated. And we're going to look at a couple of examples of this. So we're going to look at saturated solutions from two perspectives. One where we're given the temperature and we're trying to figure out the mass of solute dissolved at saturation. And one where we're given the mass of solute and we're trying to figure out the temperature at saturation. So let's look at the first one. We're going to find the compound KNO3, potassium nitrate. And we're going to look at where potassium nitrate, where that line intersects at 50 degrees Celsius. So if we go to table G and we find KNO3, which is right here, here's KNO3, it's this line right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to 50 degrees Celsius, which is down here, and I'm going to go up, up, up that line to see where it intersects, and it intersects right here. So at 50 degrees Celsius, that is where it's going to intersect the line, and where it intersects the line is the saturation point. So then I'm going to go over to the y-axis right here, and I'm going to see what is the amount of solute that will dissolve at saturation. And it looks based on these results that it's probably 85 grams. So over here, I'm going to write 85 grams. So again, that's potassium nitrate at 50 degrees Celsius, 85 grams of solute will dissolve in 100 grams of water at saturation. Let's look at the next one. For this one, this is sodium chloride at 25 degrees Celsius. So again, I'm going to pull up table G and I'm going to find NaCl. And here is NaCl right here. And that applies to this line right here. I'm gonna highlight as best as I can. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 25 degrees Celsius, which is roughly around here. And then I'm going to go up, up, up. It's sort of a sad line until I see where that intersects. And I can see that intersects right about here. Then I can go across at this point roughly and figure out the amount of solute that dissolves in 100 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius. Therefore, at 25 degrees Celsius, the amount of NaCl that will dissolve in 100 grams of water is roughly, is roughly 38 grams. So these are examples of being given a temperature, you're given a compound, you find the line, you look at the temperature, you go up until it hits the line, you go across to the y-axis, and you can identify the amount of solute in 100 grams of solution. Now let's look at some examples where we're given the mass, but we're trying to figure out the temperature. So in these situations, the solute mass is given in grams, and we're looking at the saturation point in 100 grams of water. So again, we're looking at the mass of a particular compound. We're going to go across until it hits the line, and then we're going to go down and look at the temperature. So the first one that we're going to look at is ammonium chloride. 
and we're going to find the line for ammonium chloride and we're going to look at the temperature where we can dissolve 70 grams of solute. So again, the first thing that I'm going to do is find the line for ammonium chloride. So where's ammonium chloride? It's right here. Here's the ammonium chloride because there's the compound and there's the arrow pointing to it. Then I'm going to go to the amount of solute, which right here is 70 grams and I'm going to go across until I hit that line right at saturation and then I'm going to go down and as I go down probably the line's going to hit somewhere around here. So therefore I can look at this particular example and see that saturation for 70 grams of NH4Cl in 100 grams of water will be roughly 85 degrees. In my chart I'm going to write 80 degrees Celsius. Let's look at another example. Here's potassium iodide and we're going to look at the saturation point of 140 grams of potassium iodide in 100 grams of water. Now this is a weird one because technically we're going to have more solute added to our solvent and the solvent is water but we're going to have more solute than solvent. So potassium iodine is very, very soluble. So let's see the temperature at which 140 grams of potassium iodide can be dissolved in 100 grams of water. So we'll go to table G, and the first thing that we're going to do is find the line for potassium iodide, which is way up here. There it is up there, and then we're going to go to 140 grams, and we're going to go across until we hit the line, remember on the line is saturation, and then we're going to go down, 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 down until we find the temperature that corresponds to dissolving 140 grams of solute in 100 grams of water, and we find that that is roughly 15 degrees Celsius. So 15 degrees Celsius right here. On our chart for 140 grams potassium iodide, we're going to write 15 degrees Celsius. And those are two worked examples of saturated solutions, the first with a given temperature and finding the amount of solute that dissolves in 100 grams of water, and the second situation of a saturated solution where you're given the mass and you're trying to find the temperature at where you hit saturation. So what did you learn? We looked at how to use reference table G. We talked about table G and saturated solutions. Then we did some worked examples with given a solute mass finding temperature. And finally, we wrapped it up with given temperature finding the solute mass. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.